Well, welcome back to spiritmusicmeetups.org. It's an organization where you guys can meet with each other online through the blog, commenting to one another on the material there and to what you are commenting about. So it's a fellowship, a way to um, build a community and teach one another. I'm just one teacher. And you guys have so many experiences with music and with revelation. That's what I'm really pushing um, or promoting. And that is, uh, what that is, is anointed prophetic spontaneous music. Anointed prophetic spontaneous music. It's what is revealed to you, not necessarily what you learn from this video, this might be a starting place for you to ask. A, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek or search for, and, it, and you shall find, right? And knock, and the door shall be open to you. You have to have that curiosity of a little child. You know, we're always told to be like little child, to see the kingdom of God, to enter into the kingdom of God. So if you want to have God's skill, you have to be really open for it. That's the word humble, uh, lowly, not high and puffed up in your head, conceited and arrogant, saying, I know everything there is to know, and so I don't need anybody else teaching me. So it really means to be teachable. So this might take a couple of videos because I want to try to keep it to 22 minutes. 22 minutes playing with God, 22 PWG. It's not just head knowledge. It's revealed experiential knowledge, knowledge through experience, acknowledged through experience with God. Now, this is such a fundamental video, flam taps rudiment. It's such a small little rudiment, flam and tap on the same side. But I might have to put it in two videos because it's such a small building block, it's used in so many other rudiments of drumming. I want you to see those relationships. So, so we have a flam, which is one grace note down here. It has no time value. It's just a flourish or an embellishment of the main stroke. This is on the count, whatever the count is, whatever value that is given, a quarter note or eighth note, sixteenth, whatever. This is right before it, so I slant it down. So if you're playing with a match grip, you want to slant it down. Because if you move both hands at the same time, this is going to get there slightly before it. I'm going to play traditional grip. In a modified uh, traditional grip, that's another video. Go check that out. That's, that's revealed knowledge, okay? So I'm going to play this flam, and then I'm going to tap. Flam, tap. Now, if I repeat it on the same side, I've got to bring that up. So always be prepared, the Boy Scout motto. Okay, by the way, my name is Mike Burris. You can see that on my shirt, maybe. Maybe you can. Uh, anyway, it used to be teachmetodrum.com, but I realized I needed to build a community. So we have spirit music meetups. So here is the full stroke. There it comes, full stroke. Full will come right back up. So it's going to be a down stroke, a control stroke, and then a tap. Now, if I'm going to repeat it, I've got to pull that right back up. So it's really a tap up stroke. So I'm tapping on the same side and getting back where I need to be to do it again. So I hope you can see this. I'm going to put this all down in the description. I have a little tiny left grace note. So they tie it to the principal note. That's called the principal note, followed by a tap. So on the left side, why don't we try that? I don't like that sound. See if we can get a better sound out of that. Sometimes you should turn your snares off when you're done so they don't overstretch the snare. 
So I brought that right back up and I used my arm in this case, but I could just use my wrist. It's only going to go up that high because of the way the traditional grip is. If you're match grip, go all the way up. Traditional grip, you can tilt your arm like that, just kick it in like that and bring it up if you're going slow. Isn't this awesome? So work on one side, one side. Now if you alternate, you're going to have to think about what you got to do. You got to go here, tap. So I call it switch tap, switch. Now I'm in position for this side, tap. And that tap buys you time, switch, tap, switch, tap, switch, tap. I call this a switch because it's an immediate switch, just like with flams. Tap, switch, tap, switch, tap, switch, tap. That second stroke has to be quiet. Always freeze yourself to see if you're in position. So I call it fooling around with flam taps. Fooling around. That's what kids do. They fool around. We need to be like little children. Have that curiosity. So we got the right side and the left side. Now I said also cheeses. Well, there's a cheese. It's a single stroke. But they've duplicated that right into a right right. So it has... It's actually a compound stroke. I call it a compressed flam tap. It's compressed. So instead of one and, two and, that's a way to count flam taps, you'd be like one, two, three, four. And instead of like this, that's a cheese. So it's more like a bounce. What it is actually is a double stroke. Like we do with double stroke rules. That is flammed. So it's a flam double stroke. That's a cheese. So <clears throat> you can create a check pattern. A check pattern is check to check the technique of your hand. So you go double, double. Flam double, flam double, right? So you got double, double, one and two and, right? One and two and three and four and one and, there's their cheeses. One and two and three and four, one and, there's the check pattern. So you should be able to add that flam without messing up your double. Make sure you can do that at all speeds. So I said versus right left flam us. Right, left, flamas. They call that I, inverted flam tap. So if this is tap on the same side as a flam tap, an inverted flam tap is tapping on the opposite side, the inverted, the opposite. So it's really a pair of, a pair of singles, like paradiddle. But it's a flammed para. So I call it flamma, like flamma, para. You see flamma in some rudiments. You could make that left hand softer. So again, that is single stroke, para, para, flamma, flamma, para, para, flamma, flamma. Or the opposite side, left, right, left, right, flam, right, flam, right, flam, right. See, flam, a, uh, flam, a, uh, flam, a, uh, flam, a, uh, flam, a. Uh, See, I'm keeping it softer. Always try different dynamics. 
have the curiosity of a little child. So that is called an inverted slant tap because it's tapping on the opposite side. So let's look at some other things here. Slam accent number two. Well, what's slam accent number one? Slam accent number one is it's a triple lip, but it's slammed. Slam up, tap. Slam up, tap. That's another video. So it's a flam triplet because triplets are down, up, tap. Trip up, let. Trip up, let. And you're going to flam it. Flam up, let. Flam up, let. Now, <laughs> they just come up with crazy names. Flam accent number two is just to leave the middle of the flam out. Flam. Instead of going up, you could in the air, right? You can go flam up, tap. Flam up, tap. So it's really a shuffle. One. E, a, uh, two, e, a, uh, three, e, a, uh, four, e, a. Uh, that's alternating. But what if you did it on the same side? One, e, a, uh, two, e, a, uh, three, e, a, uh, four, e, a, uh, one. There's a shuffle. A four, a one, a two, a blue shuffle. A one, a two, a three, a four, a dun, a bun, a bun, a bun, a blam. But isn't that just a flam tap played as a shuffle? So I think it's ridiculous to come up with new names just because you changed the rhythm. Really, guys? Rudiments are not about rhythm. They're about stroke combinations. So left side. That's flam accent number two. does get you that upstroke you got to really get it up and you got to get it back down right away it's a good whipping motion so let's talk about different techniques for playing this repeating on one side slow and trapping the downs. Okay, trapping. Trap. Trapping, here's a downstroke, and you trap it by pulling your fingers into your palm. Or just holding your fingers, if you don't use your fingers at all, just don't let your fingers move. So you're trapping it down here. So here's repeating the, let's do repeating the right side. So I trapped it, my fingers aren't moving, it stays down there, and I come back up. We did that at the beginning of the video. One, a two, a three, a four. Uh, that's very strict. Now I'm going to use my fingers. See, I got my fingers. Okay, so that's really slow and informed. Let's go a little faster. I'll just say fast. Throw ups. What are throw ups? Throw ups are when you throw it down, but it, it's going to bounce a little bit. So it's a pretty fancy technique. You kind of your fingers kind of follow the stick down. My wrist is bent because it's still, and then I just pick it up. So I basically am letting it bounce. It wants to bounce instead of holding it down. I'm going to let it bounce. And then I'm going to pick it up before it has a chance to fall back down. So it wants to come back down, right? So really, I'm just lear learning how to let it bounce. But pick it up. And I don't throw my fingers out to the side like this. I just keep my fingers down underneath. That's a whole nother video on techniques of throw up. But it allows you to really get back up to where you belong long up here right so you throw it it's gonna bounce but you're picking it up so when you go faster you don't want to hold it down and then have to pick it up I'm going to 
to get out of the way so you can see that I'm bouncing a little bit there. See how my fingers come down to the one and stick and I pick it up. So that's another video if you don't know how to do throw ups. So I learn how to let it bounce. See it wants to bounce, but then I pick it up. But if you go even faster, you're going to just want to use your fingers like this. Right? So you're just going to go out, out, out. All you're doing is keeping your fingers going, da, 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 like this. You just, you're going to get your fingers moving. And then you got to get this slam in there. So I'm just letting it bounce and keeping that bounce going by tapping my fingers. So there's not one size fits all. It's like there's a lot of different butterflies. I think that's in my last video. Man, there's lot of butterflies types of butterflies so you just keep it going see I'm just keeping it going tapping my fingers and getting that little flam grace note in there different techniques for different speeds so let's look at what are we talking about here? Um, some of my chicken scratches here. So let's, we can extend the flam tap out one more stroke into a triple. Well, no, actually we're just putting these together, alternating flam tap, flam tap. But you can see that these three right hands together create a triple. And three, these three left hands together create a triple. So it's really, you're learning how to go, and you need, and these are down, tap, up. So it's down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up. So we'll just play right to here, and so you can see this. Down, tap, up, down. So we want to get a down, tap, up. Down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up. So there it goes. The right hand goes up. So I'm just going, I'm just playing the first four strokes. Down, tap. So this, this, this is up, by the way. Down, tap, up, down, tap, up. That's the up. Down, tap, up, down, tap, up. So this is the idea of play parts of something. So I'm just getting over to this left flam. But I want you to see that if you isolate one hand, that's all the right hand's doing. That's all the left hand's doing. So isolating means playing, you can play it on a rim or in the air like you're still playing on the rim. See how the left hand just goes up stroke, down stroke. Sometimes I play it on, on something soft, you know, my leg, you know, just play it on your leg. So playing parts of a rudiment is very important. So if I played the left side, it'd be blah, da, da. Exactly opposite. So that's what you have to learn how to do. It's triple strokes. So you might want to practice triple strokes, right? Triple strokes will help you with this rudiment.
Then I just add that tap and that becomes the up, see? It's just shifting around. So sometimes playing in the air, an air fake, is very helpful. We talk about that down here called air faking or isolating, playing on one, two, three, four, five sounds. Here's one sound, two sounds, nice pattern, eh? You could get addicted to that pattern. What you're hearing is three hits over here and three hits over here, but they're overlapping. Isn't that so cool? How do you, what do you mean by three sounds? You can make the, the accent on a different sound. So I could go, um, so you right, right. That's still two sounds. So I'm going to go. The accents on one sound and the non accents of the right hand on are on a different sound. So now we got three sounds. These could be parts of your drum set. Four sounds, well, you know, you got a, another accent on the left side. So you go one dot, one dot, da. Now it's accent up here. I haven't tried this. So you got four, wow, you got five sounds. That was actually five sounds because you got the one in the middle. Anyway, you got to try this on different drums and you're really getting your hands around. Well, we ran out of time on the 22 minutes. We got a lot more to go here, but I would say before we go, I want to say that, you know, have that curiosity of a little child. Um, so many times I've been in the drum room where that was the only thing that was keeping me going, this insatiable desire to know more about rhythm and music. And, you know, where does that come from? Do you think everybody has that? Oh, no, 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 no. Not everybody has this. It's a revelation to you, and you need to pull on that string. And when I did, I found out that this is coming from God. This is the curiosity that the scientist has when he's exploring, right, his science, or the curiosity of an adventure going on an adventure. This is given to us to discover the world around us and to be appreciative, to be grateful for what we discovered and realize where it's coming from. You know, hello, we don't worship the creation. We find out there's a creator behind the creation. And that's where we are going to find our joy. I hope you found joy in Flam Taps. We're going to learn a lot more about Flam Taps on part two, okay? And so I will let you go, but have the curiosity the relentless, I'll tell you about that more, relentless curiosity of a little child, and you will find, seek and you shall find, right? And you will receive, because little kids, they don't stop asking. They're relentless until they get what they're asking for. And God is a good God. He's a good Father. That's an understatement. And you will not be denied if you're knocking on your father's door. <laughs> he's in his study, right? He's, he's doing his work, and you're not going to interrupt him. So keep knocking on the door until the door is open for you. So do that with your drumming, and you're going to discover amazing things are going to come to you, great skills. I'll talk to you later, okay? Sorry, I went on too long. Bye-bye.